Alright guys, TouchCover here, back again today. I wanted to discuss the best brands going into the CDL 2020 season. All the branding is now confirmed after Paris confirmed yesterday, so I thought I'd do a video looking at all of the brands and putting them into some sort of tier list. I am also planning to do a similar kind of thing for the teams themselves. This does not take into account at all the players on the team. If the players were completely generic, how good is the brand and how good is their like tweet spin and taking these sort of things into consideration, I'm not going to give them like a 12 to one ranking I think that's too difficult that'd be too unfair on teams because we haven't seen too much from them yet but I'm going to put them into a tier list and I'll leave a link down below if you guys would like to do a similar thing um, you know in the future now Gorillas welcome Saints to the team rumored to have Lacefield as the final player so Lacefield Saints Aqua Decimate and um, Aix is the rumored team once all these things are confirmed I think I find it kind of funny that they're using a, um, a ghosts clip to prepare for a franchise that comes out many many years later or like will be almost seven years at the point after um you know this saints clip up whatever um that's getting off topic but i do want to do a video on the teams themselves when they do all get um fully confirmed i was hoping to to wait for the gorillas to confirm their team and then do it because florida apparently might be quite a while even though we're pretty sure what the florida team is going to be so i want to do a video on like who won roster mania right and these kind of things so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you do subscribe if you're new as always feel free to leave all your thoughts on the branding and the related items down in the comment section below um i'm sure you will it is possible still in 2019 to disagree with people at least as of recording by law it is still illegal to, uh, to disagree with people so yeah be interested to hear your thoughts down below let's hop right into things here so los angeles gorillas welcome saints nato we um we know what's going on there i thought this is kind of interesting just related to the uh to the, the that rumored team right late aqua of course rumored as i just said to be playing with saints decimated and aches so they played for respawn for the first time tonight got so demoralized how bad it was they got offline um you know this already gets me worried for this team because th you know there's some players on this um los angeles gorillas team that maybe aren't necessarily the most dedicated especially when there's a lot of money on the line and um, a lot of money going into their bank accounts saints in that last season in black ops 4 i don't really think he liked the game didn't really bother that much to get on and practice and uh, try and improve. So maybe something to consider going forward when we uh, reveal and uh, when we look at that team. Now, this is a very interesting thing. We've heard about this potential overhaul coming later in November, the, the entire game. You know a game's good when you have to do an overhaul one month into the title, right? Um, but yeah, the latest update added 38 maps to the file. According to Gaming Revolution, a tweet we'll look at in a second, a lot of these maps come from like Spec Ops and the like, but we have Crash in here. Gulag is interesting given we there's always a, already a map called Gulag Showers, which is like a gunfight 2v2 map. But anyway, a lot of names of different maps here. I'm seeing Shipman, I'm seeing Slums. Is that going to be Black Ops 2 Slums um, that came back in Black Ops 4? Who knows, really? Um, and yeah, we've got Rust, some other names here. So apparently there's a lot more potential maps on the line ready to come into the game. And we'll have to see how this goes. Whether these will come into competitive, who knows? I hope so. I hope we will get some other maps that um, become available for to potentially be competitive viable before the season goes live because the way the season's working I'm pretty sure there's going to be like two stages kind of things probably it says to me that the first stage will more than likely have all the same maps and rules then maybe for the second stage then they might add some new maps in so hopefully before the league starts we get to switch up on these maps because otherwise we're playing the maps we have now for the entire first stage would be my um would be my thinking whether they'll all come to competitive who knows just another thought here from Clayster. If only there was a ranked playlist that all the people who hate pubs could go and play. I wish this was possible in this game. Of course, to some degree, they have more uh, pressing things on their mind. I think there's more important things for competitive play right now to be fixed than there is to add a ranked playlist. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to add one because I do not hop on Modern Warfare and play unless it's game battles because pubs is just not fun um, at, at all. So anyway, here we go then. Let's go on to the announcements in just a second. Just before we do that, probably live when this um, tournament is, uh, probably live when this video is going live, is this Subliners tournament. And um, eight teams remain as of this morning, at least when I'm recording this video. So I'll leave it linked down below if you guys want to watch this tournament. There'll be a few other things going on tonight as it's Sunday. And yesterday there was a lot of clips uh, coming out as well that I might share with you at the end of the video. If we have time, of course. So yeah, um, uh, yeah, these are some of the teams. Some pretty big name matchups coming up right here. Uh, of course, Sensor playing with Zero made it all the way to the quarterfinals. See if they can go any further. Here we go then. Paris Legion confirmed they're uh, presenting your Paris Legion. They say hashtag on guard. Um, this means like in French... It literally means like working, but really it means like um, forward, going forward, marching forward, this kind of thing, right? Um, so it's a pretty cool team name and pretty cool branding. I kind of like it on the whole. I guess I should share the video.
So, of course, their team, I think they also presented their team at, like, the Paris Games Week. So, Zed, Breezy, um, Josh, of course, as coach now, but you've got Shocks, you've got Dens, you've got Luca on the team, you've got Mayhem, Phantoms, I think, is, is the rest of the guys on the squad. So, a very interesting team, and we'll have to see how that goes going forward. But I kind of like what they're doing with the whole branding thing here. And let's go in a second to ranking these teams. So, these are the eight teams. The Atlanta Fays, Chicago Huntsman, Dallas Empire, Florida Mutineers, London Royal Ravens, Los Angeles Gorillas, Minnesota Rocker, uh, pretty sure how you meant to pronounce that, who really knows, New York Subliners, Opta Gaming, Los Angeles, Paris Legion, Seattle Surgeon, Toronto Ultra, let's go into ranking some of these, then I thought I'd share this with you guys as well, um, Lion Mad had made these uh, camos for all of the teams, a lot of these are really, really fresh, and I thought I'd just uh, put them on screen if you guys wanted to have a look, a closer look at any of them, and maybe this would give some degree of an indication how these have been made, into how good uh, these brandings are going to be for the upcoming season, and to give you an indication of how the colour scheme looks on certain things, I honestly think a lot of these look really, really nice, um, especially because the, the Empire one was the first one he made, which is probably uh, looks the most dull, but then when you get to like the Ultra and the Legion, like some of these look really, really nice. Would be great to have something like this in the game, right? But um, unfortunately... Uh, uh, that's probably not a priority for these guys when they have a lot of other things to consider on their mind. So here we go. I'll leave this link down below. This is a thing called Tear Maker. Um, if you guys have seen this before, I was going to make my own one. This is one that um, uh, Nameless and Pac-Man use to rank the teams in terms of how good they are, like the overall team, rather than just the branding. I was going to make my own one, but when I went to make it, it said, oh, you have to make an account or log in through Twitter. And then, you know, when it's like authorized Twitter and it says, oh, this will allow you to like, this will allow Tear Maker to unfollow, follow accounts, post tweets, this kind of stuff. I was like, nah, let's not do that. This hopefully will suffice. Not all the pictures are fully up to date with all of the branding, but we kind of know what it is. So uh, so let's hop right into it here. Uh, leave this link down below if you guys would like to check it out. Of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below as well. And let's go. So we have D up to S tier. So five different tiers I'm going to be ranking these teams in. Um, S tier is like difficult for me to put any teams in S tier really, given that, um, you know, it's so early in early days. I'll probably put one or two teams in there depending on how I'm feeling. Let's start off then. I'm probably going to go D tier Los Angeles Gorillas. I don't really like the branding here. They've um, The Gorillas, I don't really see too much relation to this logo. I also think that their announcements have been kind of strange. Their videos that they announce players are actually pretty good, like highlights from previous times. They have a lot of um, highlights in those videos against Opta Gaming, which is kind of the point, like Battle for Los Angeles. I kind of get that, but apart from that, the branding's a little bit strange. The logo's just, um, there's not too much going on here to really read into. The team doesn't really have any kind of, um, you know, kind of values or culture or anything like that that you can really attribute to that squad. There's no real excitement that comes out from that branding. So that's why I'm going to put it D tier, but of course you guys may disagree. Moving onwards, we're going to go C tier. And um, yeah, okay, where should we start here exactly? I think I'm going to go Toronto Ultra. Now, some of you guys may think this should be higher, and maybe it should. But I get kind of mixed messages from this branding, because when they first came out, when they did their announcement video, they did, they did this whole, like, kill them with kindness kind of um, Canadian vibe, right? And then they come out with this Ultra's F t-shirt branding. So I'm like, what are you going for? Are you going for the kindness Canadian approach? Or are you going for the in-your-face branding? I don't know what you're going for exactly. The Squirrel branding is a little bit strange. I'm unsure where to place this team in terms of trying to find a um, you know, characteristics right of the brand. So that's why uh, I'm putting it this far down. I do kind of like the color scheme, though. Um, I think their branding reveal was really cool, especially what they've done with their brands in the mainstream media, like when they had the whole launch party. They've been doing things with their fans at local events and that kind of stuff. The way they utilize Utilizing their brand is good, but the brand itself, I'm not fully convinced exactly what's going on yet. New York Subliners, I'm going to go as a C tier as well, because I'm just not convinced. Like, um, the, the logo is strange. Maybe it'll grow on me. What's the relation to New York exactly? I understand the subway and this kind of stuff, but like, um, what are the characteristics there? Difficult to say. I'm not a big fan of this brand right now. It's going to have to grow on me. The same guys own this as own the Excelsior in, um, in the Overwatch League. Let's just do a quick comparison there, actually, because this uh, image is the, the Call of Duty ones. This image shows all of the Overwatch League ones. So you can see the Excelsior here, which is another trippy New York branding. Who do you think wins is a quick question. Uh, personally, I think the Overwatch League brandings are, are better than the Call of Duty ones, but maybe you'll grow on me over time, who knows. Um, some of these are nice, some of these are questionable. So, uh, you know, may maybe we can maybe we can compete long term. So what should we go here to round out the C2? I'll probably only put one more team in. I think I'm going to go for Opta Gaming. Now, this is an um, interesting choice, I suppose, but I really don't really rate the Opta Gaming branding that much because it's effectively been hijacked, right, by this new ownership. Not too much has changed. The uh, 
um, you know, the branding is still the same, all the merch is still the same, but yet it doesn't really have the same feel. To be fair, their announcement video for their players was very, very good, but I'm not going to put the Optic Gaming branding too high. I'm going to go Chicago in the B tier. I think Chicago Huntsman is okay branding. It's grown on me a little bit, but there's not too much association there. I'll probably put the Atlanta Phase here in B tier as well. I kind of like what they're going for. I think the Phase branding is slightly better than Optics because it doesn't have the connotations surrounding the, um, you know, the takeover and this kind of stuff, but it still doesn't really pop as being like um, super exciting. I think the Paris Legion is actually quite good. I kind of like what they're going for there with the On Marsh stuff. Um, and then, yeah, let's go into the A and S tiers then. I think I'm going to go for the Minnesota Rocker as an A tier one. I kind of like this now. It's kind of grown on me, the whole Viking vibe, given it's uh, quite high up north, the northern lights, these kind of ideas. I like the logo as well. I like what they're going for here with the one eye lit up. Um, I kind of like it, but you know, a lot of this is subjective, of course, right? I'm going to put the Royal Ravens here as well. This guy may be, this may be questionable to some of you guys. You may think they should be lower down, um, but I kind of like it. I, I'd prefer if it was just the Ravens, but it is what it is. The Royal Ravens is still okay. I like the association with London, given there's the Ravens folklore surrounding the Tower of London. You have to be six Ravens on the tower, otherwise London will fall or whatever the case is. Um, hashtag six Raven is good as like the, re referring to the, referring to the crowd and all this stuff. And they've got some good social media guys on their team now. So definitely their branding has grown on me. And then we've got three left here. All right, so how to round out the A tier. I think I'm going to put the Florida Mutineers in here. Um, this is branding that I kind of like. I really like the logo. I really like the way it looked when uh, when uh, Lion Man made this, uh, this graphic here on the weapon. It's kind of good. I'm not 100% sold on it. Of course, there is this battle between the Mutineers and the Surge, the Seattle Surge. Who exactly has done that better? In my money, I think the Seattle Surge has done it better in terms of the branding, the, the water base kind of stuff. I really liked their announcement and their reveal, and uh, yeah, I, I think they've just done a really great job. It's definitely a brand I can get behind, and I'm also going to put the Empire up here in S tier. This is branding that I consider repping, um, or at least like if, if there was merch that came out for this, I'd probably, like, I like it. Um, it's pretty cool. The logo has maybe slightly fallen off in terms of when it first came out, I thought it was really, really nice. Since then, maybe there's some other, um, you know, brands and some other logos that have lived up to it but the overall brand I really like the idea of the empire so this is my tier ranking I think this might be similar to quite a few of yours but I'm sure you guys will switch this up you know very much so um I think this is a good way to do it though with three teams in a b and c tier and then s and d either side away so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always leave your thoughts down below thanks for watching I'll see you next time